Hi there, my front end friends. Position absolute is one of those things that is super useful, but we need to use it in relation to other elements or it just gets unwieldy. And to explain what I mean by that, I recently had someone ask a question in my Discord server that was having some issues with how something was positioned and they would zoom in and out and it would sort of break the layout and that's sort of really annoying when stuff like that happens. So I actually made a video reply to help them out. And along the way, we also went into custom properties and how we can sort of use those to do some, you know, just link things together and make everything a lot simpler as well. I definitely don't make video replies to all the questions in the Discord. There's a lot of other people who help out in there uh, as well. But uh, in this case, I thought a video would be the easiest way to help them out. So I'm gonna be sharing that with you now and if you'd like to join the Discord, the link to it is in the description. All right, so the question is, when you place a div over the top of another div using abs position absolute, the position of the element becomes displaced when zooming in or out. And you mentioned, I guess you got this from a video since you say in the video, Drew mentions he queries the pixel size and he's using, so he has this like pixel size width and height and stuff. So I think the first thing here is, um, and this is what we're talking about, right? Like we have this and if we zoom in or out on it, like everything stays positioned properly. And I'm guessing I found this over here. It's using position absolute for the D pad. Um, but before really breaking that down, I think the, the first thing is to just understand how position absolute works. So here's a new, I'll make a new code pen here, um, really fast. And so let's just do like, say we had the game game board or whatever here. Um, right. And then we have the D pad, D, uh, D pad. And I'm just, we're not going to put anything here just so we can see it, I guess. Um, and have some content there. So game board, let's just do this fast game board. Let's give it a width of 500 pixels, a height of 500 pixels and a border. So we can see it of five pixels solid and we'll just say black for now. And that should give us, there's our game board. And maybe we'll make this a bit smaller, actually 400 and 400. So it, there we go. Um, just to make it easier to keep on screen. Then let's come in with our D pad. Uh, or you know what, let's come first here on the body just cause it was centered, right? So let's say on the body, we do a display grid, uh, min height, 100 VH and a place items of center. Uh, just so our, our entire game board moves to the middle. And then let's come on the D-pad. And I, I hope I understand the question here uh, and what's going wrong, um, but we'll give this a width of say 50 pixels, height of 50 pixels, and a, we'll give it a, let's do background of uh, light green and a border of oh, five pixels, solid dark green. I think we have a dark green, right? There we go, perfect. Uh, and you wanna get your D-pad over here so you end up coming and we say that this has a position of absolute on it. And then we do a bottom of, I don't know, uh, 150 pixels, let's say, and just see where that goes. Uh, that looks pretty good actually. And then we're also gonna do a left of 150 pixels because that should give us a left. I wanted that to be a right, sorry about that. Um, you know, it's there, maybe this a hundred pixels instead, and you get it positioned where you want it to be. Um, we're going to magic number this into the right spot. That looks pretty good. Uh, but even now, like this isn't working, right? Cause it's, it's, we've magic numbered our way there. Um, and this isn't positioned relative to the black box. It's positioned relative to the entire screen. And there's ways we could get that. So it's, you know, this doesn't happen, but to me, this is where like zooming in and out breaks it, um, which you mentioned. And that's because. When I zoom out, this is shrinking down, but we're still the same distance here of 150 pixels. And then the bottom here is still 125, but this is changing in size. Whereas if I come on my game board and I say this has a position of relative, um, then here, if we zoom in and out, it should stay consistent within that placement. And now we're just, we're way too far off, <laughs> right? Cause we want it to be sort of down there. So maybe my bottom now is 20 pixels and my right is 20 pixels. And now we're positioned in the right spot there. And if I zoom in or zoom out, let's say, it's always going to be the same distance from that because this position, it's looking at the containing block. 
So when I do a position absolute on here, the containing block becomes the viewport. And then I'm positioning it with the top, bottom, left and right, it's all for the viewport. But if I add this position of relative, and it doesn't have to be relative, this could be absolute on here as well, it could be uh, sticky, it could be fixed. As long as the position of this is not static, this is the nearest ancestor that has positioning other than static, and so this becomes the containing block. So when I do my top, bottom, left, and right, it's all being positioned relative to that. So that's, I think, the first part of your question um, that we were looking at. Um, so why it stays perfectly placed all the time. Pretty sure it's from that. That's the only thing I can think of anyway. So if you if you did that already, please let me know. Um, the other thing though is you did mention this var pixel size and this negative pixel size that's going on here. So I do want to examine that a little bit as well. So let's open up the code pen um, that you were looking at. If you're enjoying this video and you found it useful so far, we're going to be looking at how we can use and leverage those custom properties uh, as I did mention. We'll do that all in one second, but first I just wanted to say that if you're enjoying this, you'll probably benefit from my course CSS Demystified, where I explore concepts that don't get as much attention as they should, like containing blocks that we've been looking at now and formatting contexts, as well as a lot of other things. It's really a course for people who have been writing CSS, they sort of understand the little bits and pieces of it, but they're having trouble putting it all together. And it also includes taking advantage of custom properties like we're about to see how we can do right now. And I did notice we have the pixel size here and what he does is he basically uses, you know, he changes at different viewport sizes here um, what the pixel size is so everything can just grow and shrink in relation. So this is sort of driving the entire thing, here, right? The size of everything is being done through that pixel size that we have right there. Um, but if we go down to the d-pad specifically, um, he's basically just using that to m get the D-pad to be positioned correctly um, based in that board. So there, there's definitely going to be a position um, on there somewhere. Now what I don't see is that negative, like here on the D-pad itself, he's not using that negative um, positioning. So let's just do, let's look for, or I mean this is still the same idea where he's using the calc. So he's just saying like if one, I want it to be like double one pixel this way and then the bottom two, we're doing doubling it, and then he's using this, um, and he's probably using this through it everything, right? Because this is what's, the pixel size is what's driving his size, and then you do times two, so like the distance there is two, two times what a pixel would be, and the distance from the bottom is two times what a pixel would be. Um, and then the size of it's also being driven by that. And if we just jump back to your question, uh, which I can't find, <laughs> there we go. Uh, yeah, so we could bring that in. Oh, here it's on corner, top left, da, 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 da. Okay, I'll find that in his code and we can look at that as well. But just by doing a times negative one, we're just sort of moving the other way. So here, let's come in our own code pen that we'd had and let's just come up on, it could be in the root, it could be on the game board. I'll just put it here so I don't need a new selector. And let's just write pixel size. Uh, I'm gonna do five pixels just so it's more noticeable than a smaller number. And so here, instead of doing like the bottom of 20 pixels and the right of 20 pixels, if I do a var and then it was pixel size, and then we take that same thing here and we paste it in here, we're gonna be, that pixel size is my distance from the top and the bottom. If I zoom in and out, it's always gonna stay that same way as we had before. So it's always just gonna be this five pixels. But say I wanted to change it, I wanna go back to the 20. Well, I know this is five. So then I could come here and do a calc and do, I need to move this and do it times four because that would give me the 20. And we do the same thing on this one right here. Paste that in and then we're getting that 20 pixels distance right here. And then even for these, it probably, if we, this is just to maintain that relationship with everything, we'd want to do something similar here, but a lot bigger. So we could come on um, my width 400, uh, would that be times 20? <laughs> if my math is any good, <laughs> my size might be wrong here. Um, and then we can do the same thing for two times. That's way too small. That's gonna be too big, no? <laughs> I can't do math, whatever. We'll just come in with a number here so we have a size, <laughs> um, right? So there's my game board that's being controlled. There's my D-pad and they're all relative to this pixel size. So if I change my pixel size and make it bigger, the, everything's gonna grow. The space here grows because it's all relative. The, everything is changing. So even like here where I had my width and height, I'd probably want to change that to use my pixel size as well. Um, and then 
there is the negative, like times negative one where you're using. So like, this isn't the best example, but I'm guessing that might be used. Like if this is the middle and we want to move something down, we could do that with the negative value instead of a positive value. So here where my bottom is there, if I did this times negative four, it's just going to move it down instead of up, but it's still keeping that relation to the pixel size that we originally had at the beginning. Now, once again, the link to CSS Demystified is in the description just down below. And with that, I would really like to thank my enablers of awesome, Philip, Andrew, Simon, Tim, and Johnny, as well as all of my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.